minutes homeschool q a time i am answering the questions that you guys are asking and um, this is part one of our videos and there will be a part two so look for that Okay guys, so welcome back. Um, if you don't already know, or you're brand new to my channel, welcome. Um, I have a blog, it's downhomewithlemonpie.com and um, this channel, and I am just um, a Christian stay-at-home homeschool mom to six kids. They uh, range in age from twins that are two all the way up to nine years old. And um, I posted on Instagram and on Facebook to see what questions you guys want answered and today I'm answering those. Um, I have 12 questions. Um, I was planning to do 10, but I have 12, so that's okay. And um, I'm gonna do it in two parts. So this is gonna be part one. You'll need to look and find part two. All right, guys, um, I have my little uh, notebook here. I wrote down the questions and I wrote down my answers so that I can uh, be prepared for you guys. So um, the first question I had is, how do you teach multiple ages at the same time? Um, if you have been watching my videos, you know that we do a lot of family style schooling. Um, we teach our kids in a manner that they are all learning together at the same time, despite their age differences and skill differences. But how do we do that? So the way that I do that is, um, in, I'm talking about subjects that we can do as a family. So I'm not referring to things like handwriting or math or reading or um, those kinds of things that are more um, grade specific. But I'm talking about things such as history and science and geography and art and music and um, just kind of those broader subjects that we can do together. So this is the way we do it. We actually use My Father's World curriculum. We do, um, this is our first year to jump onto their loop. Um, I forgot what they call it, but it's their cycle, their family learning cycle. And this is our first year to get on that. But we have been doing that kind of learning since the beginning. So um, for example, the way that we do it is I take what my oldest is learning. My oldest is nine and um, my seven-year-old pretty much just pairs up right with her. Um, whatever she's doing, my seven-year-old generally is doing the same thing. Um, however, if there is, for example, something that has a lot of writing or um, something like that, the skill that I am um, requesting them to do is a little bit different. So for my nine-year-old, she is required a lot of times to do it in cursive whereas print for my seven-year-old. Um, if it's a lot of writing, I may have um, a shortened amount uh, requested for my seven-year-old. Um, so my six-year-old, he's just basically listening. He does get involved with the, um, especially this year, he gets involved with like some of the hands-on stuff. So if it's a hands-on activity, he's doing it, but if there's a write-up that goes with it, he's not doing that, but my girls are. Um, same with my four-year-old. So he is um, engaged and in the area while we're doing it, but he is not necessarily, um, I'm not answer, asking him specific questions and expecting an answer. Um, so that's kind of how we do it. Um, I hope that made sense. It seemed a little confusing, but I hope that made sense. But basically I just take it from my oldest point of view and I just work my way down on their skills and customize the assignments and projects to their level. Okay, so question two. What subjects do you teach outside of the core subjects? Okay, the core subjects aren't listed in this question. So I'm taking that to mean like your basics, like reading, writing, math, geography, history, science. So besides those, okay. So here's what we are teaching in addition to that. Um, we teach cooking. We have taught sewing. Um, we don't do all of these at the same time. Sometimes we'll do like little, um, like a month of this or a semester of this or a summer of this or whatever. So these are all just things that we have done in the past or are currently doing. Okay, so cooking, sewing, um, art history, uh, classical composers, nature study, um, missionaries, character studies, uh, gardening, um, taking care of farm animals, uh, herbal healing, 
um, 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 poetry tea times and hymn studies. There's so many more. Um, did I say manners? Manners too. Um, there's so many more, but um, those are kind of some ideas of things. We also, also do um, author studies. We're doing one right now actually on Eric Carle, but um, I'll just pick an author and we will read and do activities for um, all of the books or many of the common books by that author. Um, typically, if I'm doing an author study, actually, it is preschool based. So it's kind of a fun activity for my big kids, but it is more like the lessons for my little guys. Okay, question three. How do you gauge progress without traditional testing or grading scales used in public school? Okay, so um, if you watch some of my other videos, I talked about how I don't actually take like grades or um, do formal tests um, for my children. So how do we do that? So the way that we do is um, we do a lot of things orally. Um, if I teach a lesson and then um, I want to gauge that they understood it, then I will have them repeat the lesson back to me or I may have them reteach it to me or reach it, reteach it to a sibling. Um, and I can see how they understood it and comprehended it. Um, another thing that I do is I do keep examples of their work from year to year so I can see um, like how things have grown, how they've grown and how they've changed. I also have a master list. I recommend you start this if you're starting homeschooling. I have a master list with each child and what they did in that school year for each grade um, and for each subject. So I do have that as well. Okay, so I also do narration. For example, if they read a lesson, like particularly in reading um, or in um, science or some other subject, if they're reading it, they will read it quietly and then they narrate it back to me. They give me a summary basically. And um, so that helps me see if they understood it. I'll ask them questions throughout as well. So it's kind of like an, I guess an oral test, but um, not, not like a formal, okay, today we're gonna have a test. Let's sit down and here's your test and no peeking, none of that. Okay, I also keep a list of the workbooks that they have completed um, in each school year. Okay, question four. What is one thing you consider foundational to be successful at homeschooling. Okay, so um, I couldn't come up with just one thing, so I have several here, but number one that I'm going to talk about is going to be um, just knowing that God equips those he calls and that if you are called to homeschool, then you are going to be able to do it. And it may not look just like, um, you know, this other person's homeschool or this other person's homeschool or even my homeschool, but it is, the um, basically having the confidence and the faith that you are able to do it. Um, going off of that as well, I'm going to say that you need to understand that you need grace and that you need to have prayer in your homeschool so that you can, um, you know, trust God that he's going to lead and guide your family and your homeschool in the way that it needs to go. Uh, Another thing I'm gonna talk about is letting go of the world's expectations, um, whatever that may be, if it's your expectations of homeschool or whatever. But for me, it was my expectations for how our school should look were very much dependent on what I grew up with. And I grew up in public school, so I felt like our homeschool in the beginning needed to look like that, like that was all I was experienced in. So it was very hard for me to let go of the public school um, formula, basically. And once I did that though, it freed me and freed our family to grow and to become a homeschool that is actually um, successful for our family and that we are flourishing in. So when you're able to let go of that, that will be a, a key component. Also, I'm gonna say flexibility. I cannot stress this enough. I talk about it a lot on my blog. You must be flexible with everything. Um, nothing is going to go exactly as you planned. Your schedule's not, um, your lessons are not. Um, there will be days you don't have the right supplies or there will be days that just fall apart and you just need to have be flexible and understand that that does not mean you're a failure. It just means that that is a bad day or that is a bad moment or whatever. But um, and just remembering to have that flexibility. There have been lots of times that things have been kind of falling apart in our day and I just, okay. 
and we will be done with that subject um, or that lesson or whatever for the day and um, we may even just drop everything and take a break and run to the park or do something completely different to just get us back on track so the next okay so the next question is what is do i consider my biggest struggle um everybody's gonna have struggles in homeschooling nobody is going to um not have struggles so they're all gonna be different. So for me personally, it has been consistency, being consistent um, with everything. So that is why I have so many schedules and I have our family um, planned and I have things set up the way I do because when I do not have those schedules in place, I struggle with being consistent with everything, with start times, with um, what we do on what days, with um, getting things completed, with staying focused. So just consistency. So I have made all a bunch of schedules to help with that and it is working. So if you need help with schedules, check out those videos. But that is my biggest struggle personally. Okay, last question for today. Um, on this video, remember there is a part two. The last question for this video is, how do you teach African American history? Okay, that's kind of a loaded question for some people. However, um, that has never been a thing like that we wouldn't include um, in our homeschool. That has just always, I mean, if, it, if there was a prominent person in history, regardless of what race they are, then in, that's the time period we're studying, then we're obviously going to include them. Um, I don't do some of the things that are pretty common like in public schools. I don't say, oh, okay, well, we're gonna teach um, just about black people in February. I don't do that. And um, I don't have a certain month that we're just gonna teach, oh, this race is only for this month and this race is only for this month. In fact, I actually think that's actually um, segregating more. So I don't do that at all. Um, I think like last year, for example, we studied American history. Okay, so American history is American history. We're all Americans. So regardless what race you are, if that was in our history, you know, in that time period, then we are going to cover it. So we have covered um, people of every race in our history lessons. And it's not, you know, oh, I'm going to pick this person over this person because they're white. That has never been a thing. I don't, I don't even understand it. But, um, you know, if they, if that's the next thing in the next year or whatever, then that's what we're covering. So I don't actually segregate that by a certain um, time period or a certain month. I don't do any of that. I just, as it comes, it comes. And as we teach, we teach. So um, that's kind of how that's taught. I know that may not be the um, answer some of you guys were hoping for, but that is what we do. And I think that's the way we're gonna continue to do it. Um, okay, so, um, before I sign off on this video, I do wanna stress real quick that the things that we do in our homeschool may not be the things that will work in your homeschool if your state has different regulations. We live in Texas and Texas is a um, right to choose state for parents. So we are able to do things such as not um, do formal testing and, and formal grades and things like that. So if your school or your city or state or whatever doesn't allow that, then I'm obviously not recommending that you go against their standards and their rules. So um, anyways, that's just what we do. Um, that is the end of this video. Be sure to watch out for part two. And um, until next time, I'll see you guys later.